are bringing to you and the products. That we <laughs> I couldn't say it with a straight face. <laughs> All right, my name is Scott Hanselman. Thank you very much for coming to my talk. I appreciate it. Uh, this is an overview of the Microsoft Web Stack of Love. We've got a lot of cool. Yeah, you know, this is this is not metro enough. There we go. <laughs> so we released a lot of really cool stuff lately. You saw a lot of it in the keynote. So I'm not going to rehash a lot of the stuff in the keynote. What I kind of wanted to do was show you uh, kind of the cafeteria plan. I want to do a bunch of little demos. Some will be basic, but some will be more advanced. The assumption is that you know that you can go up to www.asp.net, and you know that we have a lot of really great tutorials. We actually updated with all new tutorials on Tuesday, so we've got free stuff up there. If you go to asp.net, click on Getting Started. Under Tutorials, we've got all new tutorials in EF Code First, all new Getting Started with MVC, uh, piles of new videos from Pluralsight, a bunch of great stuff there. So I won't show you too many real basic things. Uh, I'll show you some uh, kind of the power of the product type demos. We've got MVC3 in the new tooling, MVC scaffolding, and Steve Sanderson, I believe, is in this room at 2 o'clock showing that. Uh, IIS Express, I'll show a lot of that. SQL Compact 4, the magic unicorn is wonderful. We'll talk about that. It's all going to be demos. No slides, except for this one slide. And this slide. <laughs> and uh, this other slide. And then maybe another slide. <laughs> it was actually, I was, originally I was going with Line Feed the Ninja. I thought that would be too obscure, so I went with Enter the Ninja instead. <laughs> Phil, Phil Hack was like, the first airbender? No, the last airbender. <sighs> Dude, Phil, really. <laughs> you, need, you need to work on your, uh, on your array math, brother. I mean, maybe, maybe if there was one airbender, then it would be the last and the first, but no, dude. <laughs> Array indexing, it's not Visual Basic, my friend. <laughs> and, uh, and then at the end, uh, we'll show you a super early preview of, of any framework migrations. And, uh, and by that, I mean that, uh, that, that Rowan, one of the PMs on the Entity Framework team, uh, had his buddy send me a build last night, uh, like zipped it up and sent it. And I, I think he may have sent it from a Hotmail account. Uh, so if, if they don't shut down the club before, before the end, I'll be able to show you migrations. OK? That's it. Oh, hey, I'm done. Goodbye, everybody. <laughs> All right. One of these buttons will get me back. All right. Let us begin. I've got uh, Visual Studio on my machine. And, uh, and by the way, actually, if you go over to the, uh, the ASP.NET website to do do do. MVC. There's a couple of new buttons here. This button right here says install Visual Studio Express, but it's actually been updated. This is the get everything, I don't care, just do it button. And this has been updated where if you have nothing, you'll get Visual Studio Express and MVC and SP1 and IS Express and everything. If you don't have Express, you have Visual Studio proper, we'll upgrade you to SP1 and then give you all the goodness. So it is literally the get you anything you want. And I actually use this button to get my VMs and stuff ready. It's a really great way to make a machine go from nothing to a development all at once. So definitely be aware of that. That's how you can get the new stuff that just came out and make sure you don't miss anything. Uh, file new project, uh, la di dotty. OK, blah, blah, blah. It's new, it's wonderful. I'm trying to save you guys time here, OK? Don't think of it as laziness, Phil. You checking email? <laughs> so disrespectful. At least you didn't insult me publicly like the goo. Make a uh, up for person class. Prop top. Prop top. Prop top. Okay. He can type. If we say add new controller, this is all new. And these templates here can be extended. And you can see that mine are, because I installed MVC scaffolding. 
And we see scaffolding is what Steve Sanders is going to show. And you can look at how he extended that, so then you can get in here as well, or you could extend MVC scaffolding. So if I click there, <coughs> excuse me, that is going to use Steve's scaffolding rather than the default stuff. So you really have total control of what you might, uh, what you want to do. So now this is running Steve's. Chug, 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 PowerShell, PowerShell. Notice how Steve's stuff is appearing in the package manager. This package manager is part of NuGet that you'll get when you install MVC. And he created for me a bunch of stuff. We've got views. And in Steve's stuff goes a little bit farther, because <clears throat> the default scaffolding in MVC tools update had to be kind of locked down at a certain point and shipped with the product. But Steve's stuff is up on NuGet.org, which is our package management site. And Steve can be updating that. So we're going to see interesting new scaffolding coming from uh, Steve and hopefully from the community. Uh, over the next couple of months. NuGet.org, if you're not familiar with it, is our gallery site. I think we've got a bunch of packages up here now, don't we, Phil? Let's look at the stats. NuGet, stats.NuGet.org. So look, 1,100 unique packages, 2,000 total packages, and I think we might even hit a half million in the middle of this talk if I hit F5 enough. <laughs> and uh, with the, um, the default projects, I'm having a little trouble with my network here. By default, the project template for MVC includes Entity Framework, jQuery, and Modernizer. And then I can either go here and say, like, official package source and then download things. Or I can come down to the console. For example, I could say, install tab package. Elma, and I hit tab there, and that's actually picking from the list in the sky. That's using OData to talk to the sky. So then I've just added Elma to my project. Elma is called Error Logging Modules and Handlers, and it is the greatest thing uh, since God talked to Moses. Too much? Too much? A little, okay. <laughs> I take this evangelist thing very seriously, so. <laughs> So I'm going to visit my, uh, my site. I'm going to make some errors. I'm hitting uh, my application, and I'm visiting some sites that don't exist, some uh, sections of my site that don't exist, causing errors. And then I'm going to go and visit elma.axd, and then I'm going to get an error log. It's like TiVo for yellow screens of death. So it's actually showing me everything that was going on at the time that that error happened. I can save it to a database. I can save it to uh, memory. I can save it to XML files. I can share it in web farms. It's really, really powerful. This is a great example of a piece of software that was hard to do and hard to install. It's open source. It's wonderful. It's been around for literally years, six, seven years. But it's been hard to configure. NuGet makes that possible. Very, very cool. Any framework code first makes this possible, being able to just say something like person and then scaffold out a bunch of stuff. Let me try something uh, interesting. We scaffolded out person. Let's see what that page looks like. Person. Is it per I think person, I think I named it something wrong. The controller I called it, did I seriously call it default? <laughs> All right. We're going to go ahead and visit the default one page. Hey, what happens in Vegas, people? <laughs> so I've got first and last. If I go and say, create new person, so where did that go? Well, if I fire up SQL Management Studio, check out databases, there it is. By default, if you tell Entity Framework Code First, nothing. I didn't mention databases. I didn't mention database names. I didn't mention connection strings. It's going to go and just make a database using dot backslash SQL Express. In the demo, in the keynote, you saw me add SQL Compact Edition. That then told it that, no, no, all of our stuff's going to be done in Compact Edition. And that's why that file showed up in App Data. So in this example, I'm using SQL Express. In the other, we use SQL Compact. 
I open that guy up, there's my people database. Okay? I'm going to torch that guy. Now, this is the, the new default template. You saw on the keynote that it was, MVC, uh, it was uh, HTML5. We got some like rounded corners and stuff, because that's what you'd have to do when you want to show someone using HTML5. <laughs> round a few corners. Most of the Microsoft guys, round a few corners and go like this. See, look, it's HTML5. That's great. <laughs> we now ship uh, something with MVC. It's called Modernizer from uh, a guy named uh, Paul Irish, who's a pretty cool dude. And I'm going to get rid of these because they are visually annoying and uh, are going to mess up my IntelliSense. This Modernizer is a library that lets you use HTML5 things and style HTML5 elements on browsers that don't support it. It makes it really, hello. You want to talk to him? OK. Answer and I'll say, hey, what's up? I'm going to remove Modernizer. And then something totally unrelated to JavaScript happens. <laughs> I torched the database while I was running. Yeah. Thanks. That's why the guys in the front, <laughs> the, all the front row here is Microsoft guys, like, oh, don't click that. Oh, God. Uh, uh. It's like watching a three legged dog, right? You know, he, he's going to get where he's going, but it's just really sad to watch. <laughs> oh, Hanselman. <laughs> So I'm going to bring up uh, Expression Super Preview, and I'm going to hit this. This is actually kind of cool. You may not know that Expression Super Preview is pretty sweet in Service Pack 1. And the reason is, is that not only do you have stuff like all the different IEs, but there's this remote browsers beta. So I can actually go and say, well, show me what this looks like on Safari on a Mac. So I'll compare. I have Safari on the Mac and an IE6. So there's IE6, looking awesome. This far in a Mac, looking slightly more awesome. And I can go and say, well, show me uh, IE9 versus IE6. And I can line up and see how things worked out. So that obviously IE6 looks like crap. Switch back over here. We'll put Modernizer back in. Modernizer again shipping with MVC. Oh, nice little piece of open source software. Refresh both of these. And then IE6 sucks less. Don't clap for IE6 sucking less or something. <laughs> you should be like, no! Don't make it happen. OK, so I'm going to go to IE6 countdown, where we count down to the death of IE6. OK? I'm going to click here. <laughs> you like that? Let's all clap for the death of IE6. <laughs> hey, now. I, I, let's, not, let's not be mean, though. I didn't say whoop for the death of IE6. <laughs> I have just kind of a respectful golf clap was what I was looking for. So there's this great banner that you can go here, and you can add this to your site. So I'll just take this uh, i6 banner, come back over here, and we'll hit refresh. Now I can advertise to people who work in corporations uh, that their company sucks. So modernizer is rock and sweet, and I would encourage you to spend some time with that. Actually, you know, speaking of uh, HTML5, why don't we do this? Let's add a prop date time, birth date, and then I will go and re-scaffold that stuff. Let me see if I can remember how to do this. I can do it from the command line, or I can do it from the, from the, the UI there. Scaffold, controller. I had all silly names, though, and I'm afraid. What do you think, Phil? Scaffold, controller, uh, I think we call it person. See all these options? I can hit tab, controller name. So I'm going to make sure it's the, got the stupid one name. Default one, controller force. Let's see if that works. See? It's like I actually just got modified. So we just added birth date, so now we're going to re-scaffold this stuff out. Let's run this. 